Class 2 Cavity Preparation for an Amalgam Restoration When tooth decay happens into proximally, this part of the tooth should be removed. Step 1 Place the fissure at the pulpal floor of the class 1 cavity. Then move the burr towards the carious side. Step 2. Deepen the cavity at, the, at this point to include the carious area. Step 3. Remove all the remaining two structure mesially. Step 4. Bevel the axial pulpal line angle. After completion of the class 1 cavity, this area of the tooth structure should be removed. In this figure, the mesial marginal ridge. This is done by placing the fissure burr at the pulpal floor and moving the handpiece mesially, therefore cutting from the mesial marginal ridge and making it thinner. The depth of the cavity should remain the same as with the class 1 cavity. Step 2 Making the depth of the box. Place the fissure burr at the mesial marginal ridge and push the handpiece downwards to create the axial wall. Notice the pendulum action of the handpiece. Step 3 Thin the wall separating the box from the adjacent tooth. The advantage of leaving this part of the tooth is to prevent hitting the adjacent tooth during cutting.
Now break this part by placing a sharp instrument between the shell, the shield and the adjacent tooth structure and pushing distally. The walls of the class 2 box should also be converged occlusally and diverged proximally. Step 4. By holding the fissure burr at 45 degrees, we bevel the axiopalpal line angle. Like so. And now the cavity is finished. The convenience form is checked by holding the condenser. The smallest side of the condenser should fit nicely into the cavity, both the box and the class 1 portion of the cavity, to ensure good condensation of the cement and the amalgam in the cavity.